SQL is used everywhere in technology and in 2025 it's one of the best skills to learn if you want to pursue a career in software engineering or any kind of data adjacent field. So from software engineering to AI and data science, as well as on cloud technologies and in data analytics and data engineering, SQL is everywhere and executes on top of relational databases, which are a means to store large amounts of data in a compact and logical way. So whatever you're doing in your career, chances are you're going to be using SQL sooner or later. And this is particularly true of data. And as we all know, there's a huge hype around that space at the moment. We're going to look at what SQL is in this video and we're going to introduce the fundamentals very quickly and we'll provide a recommendation for learning it in a comprehensive way later in the video. So let's start with what SQL is. It's a declarative language and what this means is that you define what you want to achieve, not necessarily how you want to achieve it. So you just write the code to get some data out of the database in a particular manner and all of the underlying execution details are handled by the database query engine. And who uses SQL? Well, we touched on that a bit at the start. But software engineers are very often interacting with databases and that's because web and mobile apps are always sending data to the database and also retrieving data from it to display in the application. Data analysts are also heavy SQL users. So for example, you might have large volumes of data in your database and you want to get some insights into that data that are going to help drive your decision making. SQL is going to be the main mechanism for doing so. And of course, data engineers are heavy SQL users as well. These people are responsible for moving data from one location to another and transforming it along the way and potentially integrating other sources of data. SQL is a key part of that work and data engineering is a very in-demand skill at the moment. And if you want to know more, check out a recent video we did on DBT on this channel. So there are lots of reasons here to learn about databases and to learn SQL in particular. We're now going to explore the fundamentals of SQL. Now you use SQL to get data to and from tables in a relational database. Let's look at an example just now. So we have this customer table here and it consists of three rows and it's got four columns. And the columns have a name and a data type associated and the rows represent an instance of the given entity, in this case, customers. Now with SQL, we can request some data from this table. So let's now take a whirlwind tour of the SQL language. So we can just get all of the rows in the data with this query on the screen now where we select every column from the table. So it's easy to get all of the records from the table. We can also do some filtering and that's done in SQL with a WHERE clause. For example, on the screen now, we filter the customers to get only the ones where their city is equal to New York. And that returns that single row, as you can see. And we can do extra filtering. So instead of just New York, we could add another city here. And we can use the IN expression here to get the customers whose city is in New York or Chicago. And we can also use multiple columns in the WHERE clause and that essentially translates to multiple conditions. For example, we could take the last query with the cities and we could also add an AND expression to that. And we can get back customers from those two cities whose name is Bob. And you can see that again filters the result set and only returns that single row. Now as well as the AND logical expression, we can also use OR. For example, for the cities, we can also chain an OR expression and get the name equal to Charlie. And because that's an OR expression, it's actually going to return all three of these rows in the result set. Now at the moment for each row that's returned, we're just returning all of the columns, but we can actually select specific columns as well. That's very easy to do. In the select part of the query, we just specify the column names that we want back in the results. For example, here, we select the name and the email column from the customers table where the city is equal to New York. Now one other expression that's very useful is order by, and that allows us to order the results by a particular column or expression. So this query here gets the name in the email column from all rows in the table and it orders the results by that name column. And because the name is a character based data type, that's going to be in alphabetical order from A to Z. So that's the basics of querying a single table in SQL. We're going to introduce a second table now and let's imagine this is an orders table. You can see we have an order ID and the order is tied to a customer by the customer ID. Now the customer ID here is called a foreign key in database terminology. And it essentially links the order to a row in the customer table that represents the customer that placed the order. Now, when you have foreign keys, you can perform joins in SQL. So let's look at a query here. We have an alias for each table. For the orders table, it's O. And for the customers table, it's C. And then from those two tables, we select the columns that we want back. And we're joining the order table's customer ID to the customer table's customer ID column. And that's going to give the following result. Notice that we have columns from both tables appearing in the result set. And for order ID 101 at the top, in the order table that had a customer ID of 1, and that foreign key is then followed to the customer table, and the customer's name in that case is Alice, and that's what's appeared in this row. So that's the concept of a join where you can take data in multiple tables, 
and join it together on some condition. One last thing I want to show is grouping. So for example, we might want to sum the orders for each customer. If we look at the customer ID, we can see that each customer has one order, except customer ID one, that has two orders in this table. And we can group by the customer ID column and then sum the price column for each group. So we see the query here, we select the customer ID and the sum of the price, and we alias the result as total spent. And the key part of this query is the grouping by the customer ID. And you can see the result that that gives. We have the customer ID column and we get the total spent for each customer. So for customer ID one, it's summed up the totals from those two records in the orders table. Now that's the basics of selecting or getting data from tables in the database, but we can also do other things as well. We can add new rows into tables. We can also update existing rows in a table and we can delete rows from tables as well. And of course we can do much more on top of that. So that's been a whirlwind overview of the basics of SQL. But of course, if you're just starting out or you don't know SQL too well, you do need a more comprehensive way of learning the language. And that's where I would recommend DataCamp who are sponsoring this video. Now, DataCamp offer a wide range of really excellent courses, but it's this one here, the skill track that I want to look at in this video. It's called SQL Fundamentals and it provides 26 hours of material and seven courses. And you also have skill assessments and projects as part of the track. And this allows you to master the SQL fundamentals that are required for business and learn how to write SQL queries and start analyzing your data with SQL. And if we look at the syllabus here, we get the introduction to SQL. We have courses for intermediate SQL and joining data. So you'll learn much more comprehensively how to join data in different tables. And you also learn how to manipulate data in SQL and you'll be introduced to Postgres as well. And there's even a course on database design and that's gonna be important if you're actually designing and maintaining databases which is something you're going to do a lot in your career. And what I think is best about this course and what really helped me when I was using it to upgrade my SQL skills is the ability to learn interactively. So I'm going to look at one of the examples from one of the modules in this course. And this is on using the WHERE clause. And we get some instructions here on selecting particular columns. And we have a condition here where the IMDB score has to be greater than seven. Now this interactive environment allows you to look at a database table here. You can see the columns and the rows in that table. And then you can write the query and you get interactive feedback on whether or not that query is correct. So to select the film ID and the IMDB score, we select those columns and the table name is reviews. And here we have the WHERE clause where the IMDB score is greater than seven. And if we run this code, we get the result set and you can see for each film ID, the score is indeed greater than seven. And we can submit the answer and we can get back some feedback from this interactive user interface. And you can see that is now correct on the left hand side. And we move on to the next question. So DataCamp provides this interactive way of learning SQL. You get tables and you get instructions and you then write queries and get feedback on those queries. I think that's an excellent way to learn the language and it saves you having to set up databases and set up data sets yourself. Instead, you're given the task and you get instant feedback on that task. So interactive learning is much better in my opinion than just watching videos. With this method, you're really gonna level up your SQL skills with real world examples. Now I use this track in my personal account to level up SQL and I also used it to prepare for a data engineering track that I'm using. And data engineering relies heavily on SQL as I mentioned at the start of the video. Now, after you complete the 26 hours of learning, there's also a certification available. So I'm gonna click this here. And this is the SQL Associate Certification. We can view that here, and this is an industry approved, industry recognized certification. And you can use this to demonstrate your SQL knowledge. You can add it to your CV and share it on platforms such as LinkedIn. So I'll leave a link to the SQL Fundamentals track and also the certification just below the video. And I would highly recommend checking these out. They really helped me at different points in my career. And thanks again to DataCamp for sponsoring this video. So after we've done the DataCamp track, which will comprehensively help us learn SQL, what do we do then? The key thing is just to practice and keep practicing. So you can work practically with different database platforms, for example, Postgres, MySQL, Oracle, and SQL Server, among many others. And you can also find lots of open source datasets online in order to practice with. And if you're a software engineer building projects that have a database, that's gonna really help you with your SQL skills, but also it will help you level up your database design skills and creating and maintaining schemas, that kind of thing is also very important. And that would be a natural next step from the track provided by DataCamp. 
to go and write your own databases and your own applications, and also get into the design concepts behind relational databases. So to sum this video up, I think SQL is so beneficial for many careers in industry and also for your personal projects, because chances are everything you do or a lot of things you do are gonna require a relational database and data storage behind the scenes. So whether you're programming in JavaScript or Python or Go or Java, or any other language, SQL is one of these skills you're probably going to have to learn. It's a very versatile skill that can be used in multiple different fields. And I would highly recommend that you invest some time into learning that and learning it in a structured manner if you want to boost your chances of getting into the industry and getting top jobs. So that's all for this video. Thanks very much for watching and thank you to DataCamp for sponsoring the video. And again, all links are in the description. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content and subscribe for more. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.